Ooh, here's Alex from Black Sheep IT Consulting. And we are off with our custom demonstration set uh, for the outbound REST Siebel outbound REST framework. And here we deal with the problem of a out a rest a rest endpoint that receives input and returns nice juicy JSON output like the open weather map service. So if you don't know about this service, go to openweathermap.org and it will, will tell you everything you need to know about that weather service. It provides great detail of weather data and it has an API. So there's the API description you can get. And I'm using the API right now. So I've signed up for the service and I got an app ID, which is free and entitles you to a thousand requests per day or something like that. And the app ID I have to pass as a parameter in the URL, as well as other parameters such as Q, which is the, the location like London and uh, units like metric because I'm based in Europe and I use metric. So I've already sent that request. Let's send it off one more time. So you can see it returns live weather data in JSON, in a specific JSON structure. And that of course is our challenge. We have this and we don't really have, or we don't pay for <laughs> uh, the open API description that we want to import in Siebel web tools. So we just have this, we have a URL, we have a response, we have a browser where we can test this because it's a simple get request. That's a bonus here. I can pretty print it and I can see that the, the weather data contains the, not only weather, but coordinates of the location, the weather report itself, if you will, as an array. And there's some main information like the temperature, current temperature and humidity, wind speed and, and so forth. So it's quite useful data. And of course, in a Siebel CRM environment, yeah, it might make sense sometimes to know the weather at a specific location. For example, when you're doing field service. Okay, so that's a real REST API that's out there. So I've used Google Chrome to just test drive it and it works fine. So what I'm doing now is a a little trick basically to get a file out of Google Chrome that is known as a HAR file, H-A-R. And those HAR files or HTTP archives, I think that's the name, uh, we can see or retrieve if we go to the Google Chrome developer tools. So basically you open the developer tools, go to the network tab, um, clean up if necessary, and run the request once. So we can see that it, um, the request itself is the first thing here. And that is the get request that we send. And that's the response that we got. So that's all nice, of course, to see here and see that it works. And we have all that information. But the, the real cruncher here is that download button where you can export that request that you're currently seeing as a HAR file. So let me do that. Let me click that button and already done it once, but I just repeat the effort. So I save this as a HAR file. Okay, what's in that HAR file? Let's uh, open it up. And as you can see, it has a lock well, a log sequence, uh, that's a JSON file, by the way. So uh, there's a creator, pages. There's lots of information about that request. But the important part is that it has an endpoint URL. It has uh, header information and it has the data information. So the content, what is returned. So we have the complete request and response information in a single file, among with lots of other things that Google deems important. So what's the use of these HAR files besides from being impressed or looking at it? The 
benefit is that we can use these HAR files and extract information and generate an open API description. Uh, yes, that's actually true. So one of the online services that you would go to with your HAR file and convert it to an open API 3.0 description, which is compatible with Siebel, must be JSON, must be open API 3. Uh, you could use API Matic, which is just one example for probably more than one online services, which are which have a free trial, so you can st get started quickly and you can pay for more services. And that is something I used over the years. But recently, of course, with the power of generative AI, I thought I'd give a try with my favorite AI tool to just literally paste that HAR file and ask the AI to convert it to an open API description. And here is that conversation I had with uh, Claude AI from Anthropic. So I pasted the entire HAR file and asked it to convert the attached HAR file to an open API 3.0 JSON description. That was my prompt. And it started to convert the HAR file into as we can see on the code window, into an open API JSON description. So in a few seconds. And that's the power of generative AI that we have today. So we are moving forward. And of course, the qu big question is, is that hallucination or is, th is that really a working open API description file? There's only one way to find out. Take that and import it into Siebel Web Tools and see if we get a proxy business service and integration objects out of that. But I can see it made a pretty good job already of the parameters that it collected, like the, the queue in the query parameter, the city name description, it extracted the example value. So it looks very solid already. So let's copy that into my clipboard. And here I'm in Siebel Web Tools and I'm creating Um, a workspace as you do and then I will just run the web service wizard and I've saved the output of well what I pasted I saved as openweathermap.json so that's the output of my generative AI and so that I'm going to import in the wizard and wow <laughs> yeah I'm, i was kind of surprised too when i saw it first time it can definitely read the json make sense of it and extract a web service definition to be generated an outbound proxy business service definition and integration object definitions to be generated so tells me here in total uh, it will generate 246 records out of that JSON. Okay, so let's submit that. And the web service was created successfully. Okay, so <laughs> can you believe that? Let's finish it and let's check out the business service. So that should be, there it is, the open weather map API, a proxy business service like any other. Let's check out what information was retrieved from that JSON file. So we have a get current weather method and we have arguments for that method, which is, okay, a response for 200, 400, 401, 404, 500 with all the integration objects that represent those responses. We have the app ID parameter. We have the, the usual security parameters we don't need right now. So you could well deactivate those parameters if you want to or delete them altogether. Uh, we have the, que the queue, the location, and we have the units uh, for metric. Yeah, that's it. So, and the response 200 that's the integration object we're most interested in so let's check that out real quick so 
So that's a nice integration object with the usual container, the response 200 container, and within that container is the body and the header, and in the body there is all these uh, child elements, clouds and main and weather, if you if you recall. And main, for example, should carry fields like uh, temperature and pressure. Oh yes, it does. Um, data type integer is not really nice here, but uh, because that's not an integer, it's actually uh, a float. But it's it's not something you should basically ignore that it, uh, but it needs a little bit of work. But I actually will not touch any of these. I will just go and test out that new business service right away to see really if it really works. So here I'm logged into my application. Let's go to the business service simulator. Well, before, before we do that, sorry for that. Let's just go back. Uh, let's go to the workspaces before because I have a workspace where my business service is waiting for me. And I'm going to open and inspect that workspace as you do. And now I'll go to the business service simulator. and start creating the service. So let's just copy paste stuff here. Let's open the method pick list because that the workspace is inspecting and we can see the method and we need those parameters. We need a queue. We need the app ID definitely. So let's start with that. So we add properties such as app ID, you can steal that from here. Okay, and we need another one, the queue query, and let's put in London. So we're getting the weather data from London, and let's run this business service, and works like a charm and returns a Siebel message child. So it's an e Siebel AI business service, returns a Siebel message with a list of and so forth. So uh, what I do here is save that to a file so I can look at it in, in full. So I can see that the response body indeed has the information from the web service as a property set. So I have, for example, a temperature which is 283, that's a lot, quite a lot actually. I'm sure I have to work with those units. So let's run that query again and pass in units in the query as metric. Okay, run one more time, save that to a file. And well, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> 10, 10 degrees Celsius currently in the city of London, served by an external outbound REST call made from the Siebel outbound framework using a real proxy business service, using real proxy integration objects, generated by a real open API file, generated by generative AI. That's the world we live in today. And so with that, I say thank you for watching this demonstration. Take care and bye-bye.